Welcome to Arrival's R&D Lab in Banbury in the UK. I'm Avinash, I'm the President, Chief Strategy Officer for the company. And what we're doing here is we're focused on commercial vehicle segment and producing best-in-class vehicles that have a similar price to fossil fuel ones and a lower total cost of ownership. We're focused on the commercial vehicle segment. That's a typically underserved segment that has really taken the same approach for the last 50 to 100 years. That is the typical approach of the industry, which is to manufacture in very large factories and ship those vehicles around the world. Now, the issue with that is, one is the price. As we're going electric, we're removing the uh, fossil fuel powertrain and replacing it with an electric powertrain, and that's having a price premium to turning electric. The second is there's no flexibility in the design. And what you find in talking to commercial vehicle operators that the way they use the vehicles actually changes depending on the local environment they're in. And at Arrival, we've managed to solve both of those problems. So we have an electric vehicle that is a similar and competitive price point to fossil fuel ones, but we're also able to manufacture them locally through these micro factories. So that means we're able to customize the vehicles and produce them at basically any volume and still maintain profitability but at the same time provide our customers with the best-in-class product that's fit for purpose for their needs. Today we'll take you through how we do that. We'll show you the products, we'll show you our components, uh, how we get the cost down and how we increase the innovation in the vehicle, and we'll show you our robotic cell, which is one of the enablers for uh, the microfactory, and you'll also get a first look at our composite plant. One of the ways we drive our cost down is through the use of these pioneering microfactories. So all of the technologies are designed up front to be assembled using a low footprint, low capex micro factory. What's important about these micro factories is they can be deployed anywhere. You don't need any special buildings, you can use existing warehouses and you can convert them to production uh, plants very quickly. So this is actually a fundamental change to the way the industry is currently working, which are these large central factories. Ours is a distributed model, but what's key here is that everything is designed up front to be, to be assembled using these. And what's important is all of that passes through a software loop to validate that the micro factories can build any of our products. We have hundreds of people working in our robotics department creating these flexible robotic cells. And these cells form the backbone of the micro factory. In a typical plant, you have an assembly line and if there's any change to the vehicle, you actually have to change the line, which is significant capex and time. In an arrival micro factory, Using these flexible cells, we're simply able to reprogram the order that the vehicle goes to each cell and the operations of the cell itself, and we can actually produce different variants. The benefits of this approach is immense. A typical factory will use thousands of robots to do production. At an arrival micro factory, we use 70. Robotics have been used in the auto industry for a long time, but what's different about Arrival's approach is the flexibility that we have. So instead of pre-programming all the robots to operate in a certain way, we're able to configure and use computer vision to actually uh, produce freedom in the cell. So for example, what I've just done is place the part randomly on an autonomous mobile robot. And this is actually pretty significant. Instead of having to be precise in terms of where all the layouts of the parts will be for the robots to understand their process, I'm able to basically put it anywhere and we use computer vision for the robots to track and perform the task. To enable the cost saving and the ability to produce our vehicles using micro factories, we have designed all of the components in-house. We're vertically integrated. So it's the hardware, the software, the robotics, uh, it's all done within Arrival. And what you're seeing here is the type of components that we're building. So all of the high voltage and low voltage systems we design in-house. So that includes our modular battery, our BMS, um, traction inverter, DC-DC converter, human machine interface. These are all actually done within Arrival. Designing these in-house also enables us to upgrade the vehicle over time. So for example, with our HMI system, the human machine interface, if there's ever new technologies that come out, we're actually able to replace this component with the later version. That means all of our vehicles are also autonomous ready. Right now, the autonomous hardware cycle is on a 12 to 18 month refresh cycle, and the existing vehicle architectures can't deal with that. With Arrival, we're able to swap in and swap out those technologies as they become more mature. This approach prolongs the life of the vehicle and also saves the commercial vehicle operator's cost in the fact that they can reuse the same asset and upgrade it over time.
We're here in Arrival's composite factory. And what you're about to see here is one of the ways that we reduce the cost of an electric vehicle to help become competitive with fossil fuel ones. So to do that, we had to be vertically integrated uh, and we've looked at everything. So we've really questioned everything from the ground up. And what you're gonna see here is what we're doing in terms of how we look at the materials that are used to make panels, which in the typical industry has been steel, and that's forced the requirement to have really large metal stamping plants and paint shops uh, to be able to get to uh, the fit and finishes of uh, traditional vehicles. But what we're doing uh, is something totally different and unique to the industry. So in terms of the production process, it comes off the roller, we laser cut it, and then through a series of robotic processes, we move it to uh, trimming, molding, demolding, uh, all done through, done through robotics. When the panel then comes off, we've essentially got the shape and size that we need. So this is an example here of in-mold coating. So right off the mold, we're able to actually um, have this color inbuilt into the, into the material. And what this means is that in the event that the vehicle gets scratched, for example, the color is actually part of the actual panel. So you don't have the typical scratches or scuff marks that you get or paint um, that gets scratched off. So that means that the operator doesn't actually have to either respray this panel or even replace it. So that really helps the commercial vehicle operators uh, reduce the total cost of ownership. This is an example of a direct comparison between steel and the arrival composite. And you'll see in the typical industry approach, uh, when we drive the truck over it, you can see that the panel itself is significantly damaged. And this will uh, require uh, replacement. When you look at the arrival composite, with the added durability that we get, you can see that the form is basically intact. And you know, with a bit of uh, cleaning, you'll, you'll be able to use that vehicle uh, as you were before the accident. And what's really interesting about this material is not only is it really durable, it's also extremely light. So this becomes um, a key benefit to getting added range for the same size vehicle. Here you're seeing uh, a door, a van door, again using the same material, and you'll also see we're able to get Class A finishes with this. So the same material can also be used in the interior, so we get the added benefit of using the same material both on the interior and exterior panels. This is an example of uh, an interior liner that's basically done uh, with the same material as well. Sustainability is a really important part of the arrival ethos. And with this material, it was actually designed around sustainability in mind. So not only do you replace the panels less, which means you, you can extend the life of the existing panel, but when you do have to replace the panel, we can actually break them back down into their raw materials. We can use them as filler parts, or we can actually, using a chemical process, recycle them back all the way through the um, end of life, back to recreating new panels. So we use the same technologies that you see today, not just to make a van, but we also recently announced a bus. And this bus has really been designed all around the user experience, both for the driver, the passenger, but also the operators that use them. In driving down the cost, we've also ensured that these vehicles are also best in class vehicles. So for example, the van, compared to its competitive set, it has better payload, and it has better cargo volume for the same size vehicle. The bus has advanced safety features, it has a fully flat floor for passengers to be able to get in and out really easily, and it's a modular design so we can quickly change the shapes to uh, enable different uh, local variants. Thanks everyone, it's been my pleasure to show you the inside of the Arrival Micro Factory and take you through some of the unique things that we're doing in this industry. And I'm really looking forward to answering the questions of the Wired Smarter conference attendees. Thank you so much to the Arrival team for that exclusive tour and that fascinating look at the future of manufacturing. Now I'm delighted to be joined by Avinash for a few questions. Avinash, how, first of all, thank you for joining us. Um, a question thank is... You. How, you've obviously focused on commercial vehicles so far, but do you feel this approach would translate well to consumer vehicles? Yeah, absolutely. So if you look at the technology and the way we're vertically integrated, uh, we create the components, the materials and the skateboard and the products as you've seen in the video, uh, we can actually translate that into uh, multiple different vehicle segments. But we are focused on commercial vehicle first because it's typically been uh, an underserved market. And we believe the application of our technology can really help to improve uh, what is essentially a, a large growing segment. So it's important for us uh, in terms of the 
ability to electrify that fleet, uh, improve the customer operational cost, and also be good for the planet. It's an important segment for us to begin focus on. One of the challenges with electric vehicles is obviously the fact that there are a lot of new battery technologies being worked on that may replace lithium ion further down the line. Does your modular approach kind of suit the fact that maybe in 10 or 15 years time, we'll be working with a completely different battery architecture? Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the, actually the, the key design considerations when we looked at the modularity on the, um, on the battery. The battery itself uh, is, is a module that can be, uh, instead of taking a typical pack approach, each module, the way we do the batteries, you can actually lay out multiple modules for different ranges. So, you know, customers can pay according to what they actually use rather than, you know, having to worry about the full cost of the battery, which is still the significant cost point in a vehicle. But also as the technology, whether it's the chemistry or even as we move into, you know, other technologies like uh, fuel cell, for example, uh, our modular approach can actually be upgraded not just the battery, but even things like the human machine interface, um, any other technology for autonomous, for example, they can actually all be upgraded over time with our vehicles. Thank you. And you obviously announced some funding earlier this week. So what can you tell us about, A, the kind of achievements you've had so far with those big deals with some of the biggest logistics firms in the world, but also uh, your kind of plans for expansion to America and beyond? Yeah, so uh, we're really delighted to welcome uh, BlackRock to uh, the Arrival family. Uh, obviously, we started with uh, Hyundai, Kia, and UPS uh, earlier this year. Uh, with Hyundai and Kia, it's a great technical partnership. Uh, we're working together on vehicles. And then we've got um, UPS, which is a key customer, but also works really closely with us on designing around their operations. And now with BlackRock, we're going to be uh, using the uh, fundings we've just recently announced to help grow our US expansion. So. Uh, we just recently announced our first micro factory, uh, again, another pioneering tech, which is a much smaller footprint factory that enables us to build the vehicles locally. So you'll see these factories start to come into cities around the world and BlackRock will help uh, expand that. So our first fact micro factory uh, we just announced in South Carolina and the US, and you'll be uh, seeing a lot more in states around the, the country. Great. Well, I really look forward to it and I really look forward to the upgrade that the uh number 88 bus is surely going to get sometime soon. So thank you so yeah. much for joining us, Avinash. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And thanks, everyone.